waja na kuambiaje kila mtaa utatuona hebu kosa uchekwe Asante. <laughs> 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 Hakikisha ile majibu yanapatiana ni sahihi na ni ya kweli. Pia lipitisha insurance kama ile ya yako. Na usiwahi sign proposal form ambayo haijaandikwa kwa Pia ukumbuke kujitolea photocopy yako. Sasa wacha nianze hii By the way, ukisubmit hiyo proposal form unahakikisha unapatiwa policy document. Uisome na uielewe hiyo ndio kitu ya kuwa unapiva <laughs> this could be you your sister brother daughter son or a friend <laughs> say no to gender based violence report any form of violence to toll free number 1195 or to the nearest police station Be a hero and be safe. This message is brought to you by the government of Kenya. Kupiga kura upo? Huu ni wakati wa kucheki kama details zako ziko sawa ndani ya register IBC. Tembelea kitu ulikojiandikisha kufikia tarehe 2 Juni mwaka huu na wasilisha ID au passport yako kwa afisa wa IBC. Waweza pia kucheki details zako kwa kutuma nambari ya ID au passport. Hashtag na mwaka wa kuzaliwa kwa SMS 70000 au tovuti verify.ibc.or.ke iwapo details zako si sawa tembelea kitu ulikojiandikisha au ofisi ya IBC katika eneo bunge lako kuwa shiwa na details zako IBC your vote your future to prime edition i am cynthia nyamai now tonight uhuru kenyatta suspends a high court judge we have the details for you and yusuf farah is back so that means one thing young and his dresses is on tonight in sports we have munga with all the action and tonight we also have something for you the inaugural machakos gubernatorial debate is up live all the way in machakos scott university i have the details tells for you and I will be taking you there for a few minutes but first let's have the highlights top on prime edition high court judge said chitembwa suspended and tribunal formed to probe his conduct The hunt for Central Kenya votes Deputy President William Ruto traverses Nyandarwa and Nakuru as Azimio Deputy Running Mate Martha Karua pitches tent in Darakanidi. 
Mike Sonko's bid for Mombasa gubernatorial seat suffers setback as petitioners bar IBC from clearing him. Lucy Mora is our sign interpreter tonight. And Rema, I would like to hear from you. Let us know what you think about tonight's bulletin. What other stories would you like us to add and your comments? And we always do pay attention to your feedback. Some of the stories that we have tonight are from your feedback. Now, moving on, President Uhuru Kenyatta has today suspended High Court Judge Said Juma Chitembwa and appointed a tribunal to investigate him. The tribunal will be chaired by Justice Mumbi Ngugi. In a Gazette notice number 5540 of 2022, released by the head of public service Joseph Kenyua, President Uhuru Kenyatta noted that the petition against Justice Said Juma Chitembwe contains grave allegations on the conduct of the judge. He added that the allegations of gross misconduct he wrote the faith Kenyans have in fair administration of justice. Court of Appeal Judge Mumbi Ngugi will chair the tribunal, assisted by senior counsel Dr. Fred Ojambo, Lady Justice Abida Ali Aroni, Justice Nzioki Wamakau, James Ocheng Oduor, General Retired Jackson Ndungo, and Dr. Lydia Nzomo as members, while senior counsel Kiragu Kimani will be the tribunal's lead counsel. Jasper Mbioki and Sarah Nyamo will be the joint secretaries of the tribunal, while Joseph Gitonga Riongo and Edward Omoti Nyangao will be assisting counsel. On 4th May, the Judicial Service Commission JSC recommended to the head of state the suspension of Justice Chitembwe over allegations of gross misconduct and impropriety. While recommending the formation of the tribunal, the Judicial Service Commission said it had considered the report of the panel on the petition initiated by the Commission and was satisfied that the petitioner disclosed sufficient grounds for the removal of Justice Chitembwe from office. Several petitions were filed against the judge, including one by former Nairobi County Governor Mike Sonko, accusing the judge of canvassing a judgment. According to Article 168 of the Constitution, a judge may be removed from office on grounds of their inability to perform the functions of the office arising from mental or physical incapacity, a breach of the code of conduct, bankruptcy, incompetence or gross misconduct. In 2019, President Uhuru Kenyatta fired High Court Judge Joseph Mutava after a tribunal found him guilty of gross misconduct. He appealed and the Supreme Court affirmed the decision by the tribunal that had recommended his removal from office. For Prime Edition, I'm Ben Troenjue. A five-judge bench of the Supreme Court has overturned the decision of a tribunal recommending the removal of Justice Martin Muya from the judiciary. The judge had been accused of a bias in a 76 million shilling loan dispute between NIC Bank and a businessman whose 14 lawyers were detained as security for a loan. The court held that the tribunal didn't arrive at the right decision in making its recommendation to have the judge removed. The five Supreme Court judges, Mohamed Ibrahim, Isaac Lenaulas, Mokin Wanjala, Jokin Dungo, and William Mouko, found and held that the tribunal didn't arrive at the right decision in making its recommendations to have the judge removed, thus overturn the decision of the tribunal, recommending the removal of Justice Martin Muya from the judiciary. In the judgment, the five say the tribunal didn't receive sufficient evidence of the allegations made against the judge. Consequently, they adopted the submissions of lawyer Philip Nyachoti to the effect that the allegations that were placed before the tribunal were not proved. The tribunal had ruled that the judge was guilty of misconduct and recommended to the president to sack him due to an appeal of a 76 million shillings loan dispute between NIC Bank and a businessman and 14 lorries that had been detained as security for the loan. The Supreme Court has declared that this did not amount to gross misconduct. 
Meanwhile, a businessman, Michael Macarena, has filed a petition seeking an order to compel the Director of Criminal Investigations to commence investigations into the death of Senator Mithika Linturi's co-partner, who passed on in 2006. The late Dr. Maure was found dead in his house from a gunshot wound in 2006. Finally, the hearing of a case involving Capsarate MP Oscar Sudi continued on Thursday afternoon in his absence. Sudi was not in court on grounds of being sick. The Capsarate legislator is facing charges of using fake CPE documents. A witness, Patrick Maritim, a former school principal of Highway Secondary, told the court that the 2006 enrollment records did not show Oscar Sudi's name. Serafina Roby for Prime Edition. The High Court in Mombasa has issued interim orders stopping the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission from processing Mombasa County gubernatorial aspirant Mike Sonko's nomination papers. Mombasa resident Judge John Mativo certified as agent an application for orders sought by the three civil society organizations and issued orders restraining IBC from processing and clearing Sonko's nomination to contest in the August polls. Sonko has been nominated by the Wiper Party to vie for the Mombasa County gubernatorial seat. The petitioners, Hakietu Kituo Chasheria and Transparency International, want the court to declare Sonko, who was impeached as Nairobi governor in 2020, unfit to hold public office. Justice Mativo said he will give direction on hearing of the application and petition on May 24th. According to the general election regulations gazetted by IBC chairman Wafula Chebukati on January 20th the clearance of aspirants will run from May 29th to June 27th Deputy President William Ruto has promised to improve the livelihood of small-scale traders if he takes over power in the August elections. Ruto says leaders under Kenya Kwanzaa are united on political and economic to improve the standards of living of the people. He spoke in Nakuru and Nyandara counties during a Meet to People tour. <laughs> The Kenya Kwanza Brigade was in Nakuru and Nyandarwa counties Thursday. Bottom, bottom, bottom. In Nyandarwa, Ruto took a swipe at his competitors for what he claimed as lack of progressive agenda. He said their opponents were thriving on politics of deceit, urging the electorate to vote wisely. Wakakuja kwetu, wakatapeli sisi, wakavunja chama yetu, wakaharibu serikali yetu, mpango ya Big Four ikapotea. Semomeskiata <laughs> na leader of majority miaka tano ukiuganisha ni 15 years na hawana stima Alia, the deputy president William Ruto met traders and locals in Akuru town for an economic forum Whenever we plan anything mwana inji lazima ahuzishwe ajue aelewe akubali ndiyo tufanya kazi yetu Sisi Kenya Kwanza tunaamini nyinyi mnajua mashida zenu na pia mko na jawabu. Let us not have any friendly fire at this point. Let us be united because we don't want to kill Kenya Kwanza. Wacha tuingie kwa shamba tukijua 1 kg ya kahawa ni 10 shillings. Here Ruto said small scale traders who earn averagely between under 100 and 200 shillings will be the great beneficiaries under his system of government if elected to power. Irene Mchuma Udim, the Prime Edition. 
And still in politics, Azimiola Omoja presidential running mate Martha Karua has asked youth to avoid being used by politicians to advance selfish agenda. Karua, who was campaigning in the Thara Karnidi, said that politicians should embrace peace during campaigns. <laughs> Azimio La Umoja running mate Martha Karua has asked the coalition's political opponents to exercise mutual respect irrespective of their divergent ideologies while drumming up support for Azimio La Umoja during her campaigns. Karua said Azimio La Umoja team will fight corruption to the core if elected to power come August 9th general elections. <laughs> Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya, who accompanied her, said the coalition will not tolerate corruption and will do everything possible to stamp out the vice that has crippled Kenya's economy for long. At the same time, Karua called on leaders to desist from luring the youth with handouts to disrupt their opponents' rallies, saying every political leader has a right to be heard. Beatrice Getonyang Etich, Prime Edition. County governments will not host regional Madaraka Day celebrations in this year's edition. Interior Principal Secretary Karanja Kibisho, who inspected the Uhuru Gardens Memorial Park, which will host the 59th edition of the celebrations, said a total of 30,000 people will be allowed to attend the event. Preparations to host the 59th edition of Madaraka Day celebrations are in top gear with President Uhuru Kenyatta expected to lead the nation in commemorating the event. This year's edition will be marked as a remarkable event bearing in mind to be the last event for the Jubilee government ahead of the August 9th general elections. Today, the National Committee led by Interior PS Karanja Kibicho was in an inspection tour of the venue. While supervising the ongoing construction works of the Memorial Park which was commissioned to honor Kenyan heroes who fought for the independence of the country, Kibicho said he is satisfied with the progress made so far. We've had our meeting uh, to just go through uh, the check boxes, ticking them. Uh, along the activities and we are very happy as the celebrations committee because all that we have planned to do is on course and it's being done. Kibicho said county governments will not be allowed to host regional celebrations in this year's edition. Broken uh, our usual tradition where uh, we would devolve this to the counties. Uh, we decided that this one is very important. We need to showcase uh, some things from our military, uh, from our security services, and therefore uh, we agreed we hold it here at Uhuru Gardens. However, only 30,000 people will be allowed to attend the celebrations at Uhuru Gardens Memorial Park. The historical park located along Langata Road was remodeled and redeveloped into ultra-modern public utility by the Kenya Defense Forces. All eyes will be on President Uhuru Kenyatta who is expected to lead Kenyans in marking this year's Madaraka Day celebrations, which marks the end of the Madaraka Day celebrations under the Jubilee regime. Reporting for Prime Edition from Uru Gardens in Nairobi, my name is Frederick Mwoki. 
A destitute class 8 student from Embu who reported to Form 1 at Kangaroo Boys High School with a cock for school fees has finally received help from well wishes. Lawrence Muremi, age 15 years, scored 313 marks in KCP at County Primary School in Embu Town and was admitted to Kangaroo. He did not report as scheduled on May 4th for lack of school fees. First for education. At the gate of Kangaroo Boys High School, Lawrence Morimi donned in his former primary school uniform and armed with a cock. The chicken, according to the boy, was going to be part of school fees with a plate that his single mother and jobless will settle the balance when funds are available. I'm Kangaroo School to report. I'm going to say that I'm going to Naomba tu saidizi. Murimi and his mother walked approximately three kilometers from their Majengo estate to the school but were turned away for not reporting with at least some personal effects. Naomba tu ni saidie ni, wanya gonowezo wa ni saidie, na ningewa imiza tu wakubwa ni saidie ni, niweze kuenda shule. Na hiki njogwa taritetawa na mze neiba, alikuwa memuambia kunye super after kutairi, Sasa kijana kaliambia mamu tutuko na shinda misi takunyo sufi. Hata tuende tulipote na yo shura tusike vila mwalimu atatuambia juu atuna namna. But moments later, Lady La came calling after well wishes came to his aid. The desperation turning into aspirations. <laughs> County Director of Education James Kairu said government was keen in ensuring 100% transition to secondary school and any parent unable to enroll their children should seek assistance from their offices. Ruth Hwamboy for Prime Edition. Well, we take a break on a high note to that story, but when we come back, the railway design details on that. After 10 years, Machakos County is gearing up to elect a new governor. How well do you know the candidates and what do they have to offer? KBC Channel 1 has organized a gubernatorial debate for Machakos aspirants this Thursday, 19th May, live from Scott Christian University, Machakos, exclusively on KBC Channel 1. Our arts and entertainment industry has evolved over the years. It is at such times that our destinies are written. Will we rise up in courage? Or die in cowardice? Who are the movers and shakers in film and theatre? Get trendy as we review locally produced films and stage drama every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on cinemas and theatre. Brought to you by the Kenya Film Commission. Film Kenya, Capture Africa. back it's not time for business construction of the new nairobi central railway station will kick off in two months following the completion of the design transport principal secretary joseph njoroge says relocation of psvs from nairobi railway station to the green park bus station will begin next week to pave way for the implementation of the 28 billion shilling project and the UK government have today unveiled the final design of Nairobi's new central railway station, which is part of the wider Nairobi Railway City Redevelopment Program. And the challenge for cities today is not just to be that engine of growth, of jobs and prosperity, but also to be a change in a way that can be smarter, cleaner, greener, and make sure that cities are brilliant places for people to live. 
The project will sit on the 425-acre piece, which is largely owned by the Kenya Railway Corporation and its pension scheme. That is a transit-oriented uh, city, a railway city, uh, in Nairobi Central District. The railway city project seeks to establish a new heart for the betterment of Nairobi in alignment with our vision for Nairobi City County. Transport Principal Secretary Joseph Njoroge says construction of the new Nairobi Central Railway Station is set to begin in July once they finalise drafting a letter of agreement with the UK government. The project, by nature of its magnitude, uh, will have two phases. There is the first phase, which is what we were actually discussing today, and uh, that's mainly to come up with the tube. Uh, that is interconnectivity between the what we call the railway station today and the outlying facilities. Currently reviewing an MOU between the two governments uh, to ensure that Kenya continues to benefit from the relationship with the UK government and in particular in the implementation of the railway uh, city uh, project. The 28 billion shillings project is being funded through a public-private partnership and will involve construction of residential blocks, roads, parks and other social amenities within the capital city. Joroge says PSV operators currently picking and dropping passengers at the Nairobi Railways station will be relocated to the Green Park terminal next week to pave way for works on the project. Good description of how the matatus will be off-roading at Green Park and also uh, um, disembarking from, uh, from uh, Green Park. And the connectivities have also been established. There's a lot of work that has been done. NMS will conduct another test run at the Green Park stage to avoid confusion and heavy traffic with NEST during the first trial. Caroline Jinga for Prime Edition. And now to one of your favorite parts of Thursday's edition. In the year 2019, two college students teamed up to venture into a unique business, that of recycling biodegradable waste using black soldier flies. All it took to realize their dream was a grant of 4 million shillings and a premises donated for use by the parent of one of them. Two years later, their business venture, Zihanga Limited, has grown in lips and bounds as Yusuf Farah now tells us in this week's edition of The Young and Industrious. The Hunger Limited, located in Kimbo's Lower Kabete area, recycles organic waste by feeding the waste to an army of black soldier flies, in turn producing animal protein and rich organic waste. We find 25-year-old Brian Amenya in this greenhouse inspecting the growth of the black soldier flies. Brian is a co-founder of the business and the director in charge of operations. This is our, this is our production area. We call it the, the lavarium. He brings us up to speed with what necessitated at the birth of Zihanga Limited. The necessity of um, animal protein in the market, as we all know that uh, protein is a big uh, issue in the market right now because uh, you can see that the depletion of fish meal from our oceans and our lakes and then also the production of soy, uh, soybeans is, is very low, especially in the East African region. So that niche uh, in the market led us to start this uh, venture. Brian then takes us through the different stages that the black soldier flies go through before they can reap maximum economic benefits from it. This is where we incubate the eggs, as you can see, yeah. the eggs. So this is how the flies lay their eggs. They, they do that because they they want to hide the eggs from predators. After they hatch, okay. now they become, this is the first, we call them instas. They stay here for, uh, depends on their temperatures, yeah? Mm -hmm. But they can stay between three to four days. Mm -hmm. Then they are ready to be fed okay. and to move on to the next stage. Now they, they come to the uh, third, mm -hmm. third insta. Okay. 
third and fourth they they are mixed yeah. here they are still feeding on potato waste but okay. you can you can mix the waste Right. Yeah, so sometimes we do mix the waste. We, we do use sometimes we do use pig waste and potato waste combined. Mm -hmm. Sometimes chicken waste and potato waste combined. Okay. Yeah, because to increase the protein levels. Now the the stage where they're ready to harvest. From here, the lava now immobile is taken to the saving unit where fertilizer is separated from the lava fly for cell. The first becomes now organic rich organic fertilizer. This is then followed by transferring some of the lava to this love cage in a separate greenhouse. We produce the eggs. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we have uh, the flies inside. Where the lava develops to fully grown black soldier flies and made to produce eggs, which are then taken to the first greenhouse for the process to start again. The rest of the lava rich in protein can't be sold as feed for fish, chicken, pigs and birds. In a good month, the net profits could run up to 100,000 shillings. The company has since inception grown and now has four full-time employees. For the founders on this team, the future is bright. The Hunger Unlimited hopes to secure the loan from the Youth Enterprise Fund to expand their business and in this way create more employment for the youth. It's so far reporting for young and industrious from Lower Kabete, Kiambu County. Farmers are using smartphones to remotely control their operations on their farms to get real-time information. Tonight on Tech One, we focus on how farmers are benefiting from machine learning to analyze farm data to boost yields. The World Food Programme estimates that drought in East Africa has resulted in up to a 70% reduction in yields and is responsible for 1.5 million livestock deaths in Kenya. This devastation of the livelihoods of pastoralists and farmers is increasing the number of food insecure people. This has prompted some farmers to turn to technology as a way of securing productivity. I'm giving the right amount as I don't have to guess if it has got the required amount and there is no overfeeding, which has helped to improve the yields greatly due to the controlled amount of moisture in the greenhouse it has helped to reduce the fungal diseases in the crop a farmer in kurueni nyeri county edward says management of water on his farm is the biggest challenge he faces and i had some challenges on water management and the nutrition in the greenhouse but then in the year 2021 they introduced a new technology whereby they came up with a farm shield which is able to control the amount of water which is going into the plants. It has got its automatic sensors which are fixed in the soil and others on the aerial parts of the greenhouse. And that, now with that new technology, the production has improved a little bit Better. Farmers like Kibisho are using a combination of new technologies that are solar powered to send real time data back through an application, web portal, or even new SSD platform and SMS alerts, allowing the farmer to monitor their farm on a 24 7 basis. Uh, we achieve uh, communication from the different spheres through radio. We have an RFM 69 module which are uh, we have designated different different sphere IDs that enable communication from the sphere from the sphere sorry to the shield. One such technology is Farm Shield that has capacity to automatically open an irrigation system to let water flow into the farm if the soil moisture sensors report low soil moisture levels or shut it when prompted. It can also switch on greenhouse fans to evacuate humidity if the air humidity sensors report high humidity levels. And as it senses, it controls the amount of water which it releases automatically into the soil, thus helping the crops to maximize on the production. 
If the temperatures are high, it signals to open the roll ups. And when the temperatures are down, it signals me to close the roll ups. The upper lasts the farmer in cases of low or high levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in the soil. Alanauko, take one. Kupiga kura upo? Oh, ni wakati wa kucheki kama details zako ziko sawa ndani ya register ya IBC. Tembelea kitu ulikojiandikisha kufikia tarehe 2 Juni mwaka huu na wasilisha ID au passport yako kwa afisa wa IBC. Waweza pia kucheki details zako kwa kutuma nambari ya ID au passport Hashtag na mwaka kuzaliwa kwa SMS 70000 au tovuti verify.ibc.or.ke Iwapo details zako si sawa, tembelea kitu liko jandikisha au ofisi ya IBC katike ni ubunge lako Kuwa shiwa na details zako IBC, your vote, your future Boresha maisha na bima Kifo ni lazima Japo haitabiriki Pata bima ya matanga Ili kuepuka wasiwasi wa michango isiyo na maana Unapompoteza mpendo wa wako Bima hii husimamia garama zinazo husiana na matanga Pata bima ili kuhakikisha yote yatakuwa sawa Huyu anaweza kuwa dada yako, ndugu yako, mwanao au rafiki. Sema la kwa dhulma za kijinsia. Ripoti dhulma yoyote ya kijinsia kwa nambari ifuatayo. Moja, moja, tisa, tano. Au unaweza pia ripoti katika kituo chochote cha polisi kilicho karibu na wewe. Kuwa shujaa, kuwa salama. Ujumbe huu umeletwa kwako na serikali ya Kenya. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Welcome back. Now, women's participation in coffee matters is growing due to improved yields and new innovations. The Kipke Leon Coffee District Union has crafted a new initiative called Coupling that helps women with limited access to land split their produce and proceed with men in an inclusivity venture. The model is fast becoming a popular one in Kericho County with the cooperative union winning accolades due to this new venture. Our reporter Benson Rioba has more details. For decades, coffee matters have been a preserve of men, right from farming to marketing. This has seen the number of women who participate in coffee matters remain below 30% in the country. Experts have been calling on more participation of women in the coffee subsector. This clarion call seems to be making headways. Before policy changes were made in the sector, creating a window for direct sales, all coffee was sold at the Nairobi Coffee Exchange. However, the Kipkelion Coffee District Union was the first cooperative to make direct sales to South Korea, earning farmers over 100 million shillings in revenue. Built by better prices, women in Kipkelion have started engaging in coffee production ventures. Because the money that I got, I used to cut, even me, I used to pay school fees for my children. Yeah. And because I was coming also from a polygamous family, I used to assist my husband so much. So even my husband realized at that time that even women can really, can, can really assist or can really pay the school fees. Due to limited land access in Kericho County, women, through a venture known as coupling, have started growing coffee to tap the growing export market. Coupling entails women getting funding from the cooperative and joining the partnership with men. I also mobilize them to have a piece of land, to, to request their spouse to give them a piece of land so that they may plant their own coffee for their own benefit, so that they may not keep on uh, asking each and everything every time. 
time. So, and, and the women actually uh, and came up. The women will then negotiate the ratio of produce they are entitled to and leave the remaining beans to their male partners. I used to, I, I, I could speak in my family and even my husband could sit down and I'd just, uh, uh, just, just, just take this, uh, the decision that I'm making uh, to be right because I was able to make a decision and I was able to be at at that time. Besides funding, women also receive training on proper coffee husbandry to ensure high quality beans for export are produced to increase earnings. And that was our pleasure and it is our happiness. And by the moment, you see, there should be a secretary, if not a treasurer. But we have not reached a limit of being a teacher. This has seen the number of women delivering cherry to keep Kellyon jump from 10% to 50% in the last one year. We are free, for sure we are free. Even the freedom we have gotten, it has given us well, the conflicts from the family, has stopped many things because everyone is busy all the time. The cooperative society targets to increase its milling capacity to 10 million kilos a year in a bid to boost production. Benson Ryoba for Famois. Thank you, Ryoba, for that story. Now, honey tasting is a unique tourist attraction activity in Baringo County. Kenya produces up to 4,000 metric tons of honey annually, with the biggest share of honey coming from Baringo County. Tonight on Magical Scenes, we highlight this place in Baringo County. Baringo County is an ideal tropical holiday destination. The area is dry and the landscapes are dominated by shrubs which are beautifully green, especially during the rainy season. This makes the habitat ideal for bees. Bees, like any other pollinator, helps plants reproduce and grow well. Beekeeping is part and parcel of the economic activity of Baringo residents and a cash-in from those touring the region. This is Marigat, Baringo South. Here, honey is usually harvested at night, just in case of aggressive bees which are then timid. Thereafter, honey is separated from wax and extracted before filtering and bottling. Consumers have been increasingly seeking authentic and interactive experiences on honey production in Baringo County. Honey harvesting is arguably an attraction in the county of Baringo. Now, this normally takes place after every springtime. Right now, the country is experiencing wet activities over most areas and Baringo County is not spared. So what is happening right now? The trees are having flower buds. This will later on bloom into a flower and this will attract bees to several parts of this region and the end product will be honey and you could be taking with you such back home most tourists to baringo county would shop for honey for their families friends and colleagues Upper Marigat pia tuko na asali yetu ambaye is a mixture of hii miti ambayo huwa tunaita from me and it is always the best kwa sababu ni asali ambayo iko na shukari nyingi na tukiangalia sana sana inatibu mambo mengi sana kwa sababu asali ni dawa asali inaponya kifua at the same time tuko baka hata na ile asali ile chini ile tunaita kusomwe 
na kwa somwe inatibu asali zaidi kwa sababu is a very special honey ambaye na mki wake anachukua asali kutoka miti tofauti tofauti ambaye ni very indigenous na ambaye ni very medicinal things in the county of Burundi. Kenyan businesses focusing on solar energy are banking on businesses to business deals with their counterparts in Europe and Asia to secure quality and affordable renewable energy products for Kenyans. This emerged during the 9th Oil and Gas Africa Power Energy International Trade Exhibition in Nairobi that has attracted 200 local and foreign exhibitors. Erratic and expensive electricity supply has seen the number of Kenyans embracing solar energy products increase. Affordable and clean energy is a critical consideration for all venturing into power and energy sector. Kenya has one of the most developed power sectors in sub-Saharan Africa. Kenya is the, among the leading sub-Saharan nations in power and energy explo exploitation and exploration. However, increased electricity connection, levies on solar products and costly solar batteries have slowed the pace at which Kenyans are embracing the renewable energy products. To correct this, Kenyan businesses hope that business-to-business -business deals with their counterparts in countries that have advanced in manufacturing of solar products would help restore the pace of adoption of solar products. Of uh, Kenya, uh, Indian industry it stands ready uh, to continue to partner uh, their uh, uh, Kenyan uh, colleagues at the industry level and um, uh, this event uh, uh, that you know we are uh, very lucky to be part of uh, I, I am sure that uh, uh, the interactions that we are going to have in the framework of uh, this particular expo is uh, going to uh, further enhance international partnership at the ongoing 9th Oil and Gas Africa and Power Energy International Trade Exhibition in Nairobi that has attracted exhibitors from Africa, Asia and Europe. Solar photovoltaics are now the cheapest power, power source in most countries and renewables yield three times more jobs than the fossil fuel sector. This comes at a time when Kenya has set the target of having 100% clean energy by the year 2030 and to achieve 100% access to clean cooking by the year 2028. Currently, renewable energy accounts for 73% of Kenya's installed power, while 90% of electricity is in use from green sources such as geothermal, wind, solar, and hydroelectric power. Regina Manyara reporting for Prime Edition. Kupata lazima nishike kama sikiza tuni yako. Bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash. Lazima nilike mapema. Nesipo shika yesipo mapema watakasirika. Ula chao vimi nikiwa mwote wa marathon. Nakiwa neko na experience. Kapsa neko na experience. If you don't hurry, you will not break the record. Ok, pacha nishike yesipo. Kupata lazima nishike, bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash. Star 811 star 962 hash. They came, saw and scored their way to the DFB Pokal final. Germany's valiant rivals, SC Freiburg and RB Leipzig are a heartbeat away from lifting the ultimate trophy of which none has ever won. SC Freiburg are still hopeful of winning their first major title in club history. Meanwhile, RB Leipzig have reached two of the last three 
DFB Pokal Finals, losing three goals to nil to Bayern Munich in 2019 and 4 1 to Dortmund in 2021. It is therefore a moment of truth for these finalists. So, five from six this season, make that six from seven. So five minutes gone, three nil Freiburg. This is history in the making. As we reveal the identity of 2021-2022 DFB Pokal champion, keep a close eye on this grandest match between SC Freiburg and RB Leipzig on Saturday, the 21st of May 2022 at 9 p.m. live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Oh, good evening. This is KBC Sports with me, Richard Munga. Now, the Kenyan contingent to the recently concluded 24th edition of the Deaf Olympics game that were held in Caxias do Sul, Brazil, arrived back home today following their splendid performance in the two-week event. The team, which comprised 55 men and 55 women, finished 11th globally with 24 medals, that is 5 gold, 7 silver, and 17 bronze medals, uh, making Kenya uh, the first team in Africa. The Kenyan contingent that represented the country at the Deaf Olympics in Brazil arrived home today morning. Kenya participated in five disciplines namely golf men, women football, athletics, basketball men and women, and handball for both men and women. Kenya posted the best ever result in history finishing 11th overall, with Simon Cherono Kibai bagging two gold medals in the 5,000 and 10,000 meters. Other Kenyan gold medalists were Luca Zondia in the 3,000 meter steeple chairs, Ian Nomboy Kahenga in the 1,500 meters, and Eli Kanarono in the 800 meters. General team manager for the Kenyan squad, Josephine Aska, hailed athletes for the best ever outing in this year's event, which she attributed to good preparations and immense support from the government. A better match, better performance. The athletes themselves feel like uh, this was a much better performance. The government supported us uh, better. When we got to Brazil, it was very cold, so we had to really try to cope with that weather. And uh, we've been able to win medals. Yeah, but then it was challenging, it wasn't easy. Yeah, but we have to accept that, uh, yeah, we were not going to accept, but we took it as positively, and that's why we were able to bring this medal. So I'm encouraging and uh, abhorring the government to please that we can have a sports academy that thinks of a way of setting up sports clubs in deaf schools and not limit the deaf people to five sports that is currently happening. <laughs> For Prime Edition, I'm Nora Mungi. Meanwhile, Kenya will not participate in next year's Africa Cup of Nations uh, football extravaganza after CAF expelled it from the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers that commence in June. Kenya is currently under indefinite suspension imposed by FIFA in February due to government interference. Consequently, Kenya has been expunged from Group C that had Cameroon, Namibia and Burundi. Kenya was set to begin the qualifying campaign away to Cameroon on 4th June, but CAF's decision means the group will now have only three teams. Kenya had been given two weeks to their first qualifying match against Cameroon to meet FIFA's conditions for the suspension to be lifted. Arambi Starlets was also stopped from competing in the Africa Women's Cup of Nations qualifiers earlier this year in the last stage of the competition. And internationally, Chelsea FC can complete a league double against Leicester City for the first time since the 2016-17 season when the two sides meet at the Stamford Bridge in one of the three English Premier League matches on card today. Everton will be guaranteed a place in the top flight next season if they defeat Crystal Palace while Aston Villa will be at home against Burnley. <laughs> 